Happy Saturday, everybody. This is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. Uh, a few days ago, I got a direct message from somebody asking, how do you raise albino cubensis? Uh, all I can do is, is share my experience, uh, you know, no recommendations or anything like that. This is Bob and Carol. Uh, they've spawned, uh, I know a lot of you have seen their spawn, about their albino cubensis, about half their spawn were albinos and the other half were uh, uh, look like species. So anyway, I think they're probably setting up the spawn again. I am amazed they are just posing for me like this. They are really neat fish too and I love them a lot. And Carol, in fact, I started out with uh, uh, three pairs and I lost one of the males. Uh, but Carol and the other two females uh, have this wonderful golden overtone to them. So we'll see what comes out of that. But anyway, their spawn came out with about 60 fish. Um, and I've since separated them into two other tanks. I separated uh, all the fry that look like species into one tank, and then all the fry that look like albinos into another tank. And then what I'm gonna try and do is get a true line of albinos at some point. Well, anyway, I put these guys in this tank. It's a 40 breeder uh, that I found on offer up for 30 bucks a while back. It's got to be about six months ago now. And uh, I put six pair of Crebensis in here. Uh, two pair uh, paired off, and I ended up losing the one male. So after Bob and Carol spawned a couple times, I got... Ted and Alice, they're in another tank. I uh, finally got them and that other female into this 40 breeder. And since then I've taken them out or, or taken a Ted and Alice out and put them in their own tank because they spawned in here. And when they finally brought their fry out, these Emperor Tetras just had a heyday with the fry and completely de devoured them all. Not good dither fish. Uh, in this tank, I do have uh, Ember tetras, wonderful to their fish. They're small enough, they're not aggressive. And I've also got four plecos, half a dozen auto sinkless, and five false Julia Corys. So anyway, what I did when I set this tank up, and it was fun because this piece of wood floated a couple times. I finally got it anchored. Uh, I put uh, fluval uh, aqua soil and then I also put some pond soil down and, and this is kind of what I learned watching MD fish tanks uh, on YouTube and I like his style and this tank was a lot heavier planted I've been taking plants out of it and putting them in other tanks so I gotta let these all grow but I planted it fairly heavy early on and there's a, a, a hornwort and a couple different kinds of anubias or maybe they're all the same Anubius in this. And uh, Sagittaria, the dwarf Sagittaria down here. There's Java fern. Uh, there's Java fern stuck to rocks. I think that Java fern right there covered in all that uh, diatom algae is... No, that's just regular Java fern. There was also a, a window of Java fern in here, and I may have moved that out. There's a... Looks like a dwarf um, Amazon sword. And I can't remember what this is. Somebody will chime in and save me, or maybe I'll put it in the, put it in. The, I'll print it on the video because it was a, uh, it was a freebie that came with. Uh, I bought five, five Java or uh, five Anubias. And they were nice too. Uh, and I'll put the link to the guy I bought them from. He's in the Pacific Northwest. His name's Will, uh, Aquarium Plant Lab, I think, is what he's called. Uh, and I found him on, on uh, it was either Instagram or you, probably YouTube, watching his videos on how he does it. And there's a couple crypts in here, and I think these are Wendy Eye. Um, and there's also some, uh, hiding in the back there, some Valsinaria that didn't really do well. Not enough light in this tank. And, and partly because I had this tank covered with floating plants. So I got rid of those, get some more light in. I've got uh, Philodendron rooting in here. And, and there's the roots going across. And that's a pothos down here rooting all over the place and that's growing in. Um, but anyway, so on top of, back to the, the substrate was uh, um, 
fluval aqua soil, then pond soil, and then uh, some, some coarser sand and some gravels and some scattered gravel for looks, and there's big rocks in here. And I ended up making a cave back here that Bob and Carol like, and they've spawned in it. That's where their last spawn came from. And I put this little cave in here too, thinking they might like this instead. They've been in and out, they never spawned in there. Uh, they had a more recent spawn also that uh, something went south and, and they were gone. They devoured them, I guess. Um, so anyway, the, the pH in this tank is uh, about 7.6 to 7.8. Uh, it's high. It's our tap water here in Palm Desert, California. Um, all the water parameters are textbook. I only pretty much top it off on a regular basis. I used to do some water changes when I first set it up. Um, and then I've gotten to a point where I really don't do any water changes here, except I took about half the water out of this tank to set up the uh, fry tanks. Uh, and I did that twice. So, you know, I set up the uh, the one fry tank, the grow out tank for the species looking babies. Uh, and then about a week later, I set the other tank up. So, you know, in the meantime, I topped this back off. Then I took water out of here again. This way I look, I look at it as it's completely ar already seasoned. Uh, I even gravel vac, and I don't do that on a regular basis, but I gravel vac some mulm up and put that in uh, this, the fry tanks to, to help uh, set in some beneficial bacteria. And I even, I've, I've got a hang on back uh, filter in here that I'm using in another tank right now to clear it up. Um, and I even squeezed the sponge out in the tanks to get some more of that beneficial bacteria going. And the plants in those tanks come out of these tanks too. So I'm, I'm I'm starting them up and then I'm putting uh, the API quick start in the tanks. And I did that in this tank when I first set it up. I regularly use the API CO2 boost and leaf zone. Uh, and again, no, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, these are just products I use. And I, I came across those products from uh, watching MD Fish Tanks. He likes them. Uh, you know, I've been using them. I like them, so they work well for me. So I also, food wise, um, I try and keep the protein levels a little high because I think that helps them uh, prepare to spawn. Uh, I feed them chunks of frozen brine. I feed them the live baby brine that I, I grow. Uh, I feed them frozen blood worms, uh, freeze dried blood worms, um, and freeze dried tube effects worms. Uh, probably not as much of those. And then also the uh, the Fluval Bug Bites brand the, uh, for small fish, the granular, and also uh, occasionally some flake foods. But mostly, you know, I try and keep them uh, with the, you know, the frozen brine, the frozen worms as much as possible. They also absolutely love uh, chunks of zucchini and spinach. So I will, uh, I put a video up, uh, on how I, or I'm gonna put a video up, I'm sorry, on how I uh, uh, prepare and freeze zucchini and then feed them chunks of that. They love that. And also, uh, so it's blanched spinach, or blanched zucchini, and also blanched spinach. And they, they just go nuts for that. As do the, the plecos and the autosynclus in this tank. Um, so anyway, I try and vary the, you know, the diet a bit, but they are kind of omnivorous. Um, they'll eat the protein, they'll eat the greens. So, you know, I try and keep a good mix of that going. And that keeps them fat and happy. And you'll also see them, just like the fry, picking off the plants, picking off the bottom. So it's like they're constantly feeding. Um, Carol's really a cutie, and she's got beautiful markings, that purple belly. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of maybe like a rosy purple, whatever. And, and the spots in the dorsal fin and, and the tail and that golden overtone, just really a pretty fish. So anyway, uh, I just want to make sure I covered the food part too, that's important. But anyway, no real advice other than to get a, uh, maybe start out with uh, four or five, uh, maybe six uh, fish and try and get, you know, if you can get three pairs and hopefully you'll get, uh, get the fish pairing off. 
Uh, and then once once you do, separate either them out or separate the others out. Put some, uh, see they're doing the spawning dance again. Uh, put some dither fish in, some small neon tetras, ember tetras, uh, not emperor tetras, they're pretty aggressive. Uh, once the tank starts developing, let the mom settle. Uh, this is, you know, my opinion. I like the mom because what happens uh, when the fry hatch out, they're feeding in it constantly because there are lots of little microorganisms in it. There's uh, uh, little little worms that, I don't know, they come out of, they're, they're magic. They show up, they're there. Uh, and other little microbes that the baby fish are constantly feeding on. And you really don't need to do anything. What I started to do after they became more free swimming, I would hatch my own uh, baby brine shrimp. And I've got two videos on one, how to create the baby brine shrimp hatchery and one, how I raise them out. Uh, and then I use them for food. And then uh, 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 since this is a bigger tank, you know, the, I use Hikari first bites in small tanks for fry, but it would get lost in here. And mostly the the baby crevences hang out right at the gravel level. Eventually they start getting a, a little braver and start exploring. You see them up in the plants, still picking off the mom. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer in not having spick and span tanks. I'll wipe down the inside of the glass once in a while. Uh, I don't get a real algae problem on this. And uh, eventually uh, I end up with, uh, I ended up with a really nice batch of fry. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a garage view here because I'm just going to go over to that tank or those two tanks and here we go and this is the tank with uh, the species looking babies and this is one of the females uh, that I moved over here also uh, in fact she just spawned with the biggest uh, more dominant male here and, and I think this may be him right there um, and they had a little spawn going under this rock. I really didn't expect it to go very far because uh, uh, he's so young and immature. So I don't know if he's fertile yet or not. But anyway, they'll probably do it again. And I'll get a mix out of that batch. And then I've also got, uh, I think, 10 of these orange uh, liar tail platies growing out in here too. And eventually I'll get them out of there. Uh, and then in the other tank... Uh, these are all the albino uh, babies. I started this one a little later. Um, I think about a week after I started the first one. Again, both tanks, all, all the plants uh, came out of an established tank with all the beneficial bacteria already attached. Uh, about half the water in both these tanks came out of uh, the other tank. So all the beneficial bacteria attached. I had this sponge filter in both tanks. Uh, this one and the one in the, in the previous tank with the species crevances sitting in uh, and working in a, a tank. So they're pre-seasoned. I drop leaf litter in here. And I think eventually I've got some cherry shrimp. I'm going to drop some cherry shrimp in here too. And they'll uh, start picking on the leaves. The biofilm that's starting to grow on the leaves will produce a great source of food. Also, uh, the sediments and biofilm on the sponge filters will also produce a great source of food for the, the shrimp. Uh, you see these guys picking on the leaves, picking on the picking in the gravel. They're constantly feeding on stuff uh, that's settled out. Um, I have been feeding them uh, frozen uh, brine shrimp, some frozen baby brine shrimp that I made, and also just frozen brine shrimp that uh, came out of a box uh, from the local, uh, you know, uh, PetSmart. Um, but that's kind of how I do it. It's really pretty simple. I tried not to overthink it. I got some of that uh, dwarf Sagittarian here. There's a piece of Valcinaria all the way in the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, there it is. And it's got a couple runners on it. Um, and uh, uh, there's a Windy Love uh, Java Fern. And a, uh, I think that's a regular Java Fern there. Uh, a couple of them. And some of the uh, Hornwort. But anyway, this will eventually just kind of fill in with plants. I've got a, a little sweet potato vine cutting up here, and it's rooting out nicely back there. Uh, all that helps take the extra nitrates out of the water. Uh, it's not too big of an issue with the fry. They're so small, but I'll test, and if I need to, I'll water change. Uh, 
Otherwise, I'd really prefer not to have to water change. And it's not the work involved. It's just uh, I, I think there's a stability involved by not doing the water changes unless you absolutely have to. And same thing here. I, I did a video on how I set this tank up. And, and it's got a, a cracked or crushed volcanic gravel down at the bottom. And then uh, um, what else did I put in there? Um, I think I put some fluval pond or fluval uh, substrate, the aqua soil, and then a uh, uh, gravel, uh, like a like a pea gravel from you know just a cheap uh, uh, bagged pea gravel from Home Depot, and then uh, uh, play sand, and then other gravels on top, and then just a bunch of rocks for them to hang out. Eventually, if I can get all these guys out of here after they grow, I, I might use this tank to. Uh, try and raise some some hill stream loaches if I can find some so anyway that's kind of where it's at uh, that's I hope that answers the question of uh, whoever DM'd me about how to uh, how to raise albino curvensis uh, it's I think the hardest part is just maybe finding them uh, I've had a couple people reach out that are in other parts of the country that they can't find them in their in their stores these guys are gone right now they're probably hiding under the rocks uh, or under that log um, and mine are just too small to ship right now so I'm not you know that's not even an option yet maybe in a couple months uh, there's there's Bob yeah anyway here he comes uh, so anyway I'm gonna let y'all go thanks for watching I hope you got something out of it if you have any questions feel free um, it's one of my favorite things to do is is to, to learn and pass on what I've learned and and maybe it'll help somebody else so uh, Garage Aquatics 2023, my name's Ron, and uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe, please.